Hi there, uh, my name is Maruf and I will show you how to install Proxmox VE 2.2 KVM based hypervisor installed on top of your workstation, VMware Workstation 8.0. You can use a VMware Workstation 9.0 if you want. Uh, so as you know, this is a free hypervisor that you can download from uh, www.proxmox.com uh, if you want. So you can go proxmox.com and download it from there, uh, and it's free. Uh, you can you can pay them for support if you want. If you're installing a production environment, you can get the support for the environment. But other than that, if you're learning or if you're installing a test paid uh, hypervisor to create a lot of VMs, and that's this is actually a good choice. It's based on Debian kernel. So uh, I have downloaded the uh, ISO already. So I'm just gonna go to create a new virtual machine on my VMware workstation. Click on next, and so I have the Proxmox ISO here click on next and it will not always choose VMware ESX but it may choose Linux as the default so I'm gonna choose VMware ESX as the default and I'm gonna keep VMware ESX i5 the reason for that is VMware workstation uh, uh, allows you to install nested ESX hypervisor so if you choose VMware ESX i5 as the guest OS type then uh, then you get some additional parameters added into your uh, VM config automatically so I'm just gonna click on next Say Proxmox VM one, actually Proxmox Server one, but uh, you can name it anything else if you want. So I'm gonna put in my D drive. And I, I'll keep the default as it is 40 gigabyte, uh, but you can in, uh, increase the size if you want and you have more local storage but in my case 40 gigabyte is sufficient for my testing and I'm gonna say store virtual machine a single file that makes it easier for me and now I will choose the uh, customized hardware option here so I want to change the uh, change the NIC configuration to uh, the bridge networking is so that uh, other computers uh, on my network can reach this proxy server if I want to so I'm going to choose uh, bridge mode and I have the two processes selected already and I will in, um, enable virtualize Intel uh, VT so I have an Intel Core i5 processor on this computer uh, with, 12, uh, with 12 gigabyte of memory uh, but uh, you can uh, you know, have an i7 processor which will even give you better performance uh, but you will need a processor that supports uh, Intel IVT or AMD technologies uh, so keep that selected and it also allows you to uh, once you select this option it allows you to uh, run 64-bit nested guest inside your uh, hypervisor when you're running as a fewer workstation so I'm going to click on close click on finish okay so just gonna power on this virtual machine now And now we're in the boot mode of Proxmos virtual environment. Okay, this is the uh, license agreement. You can read it. And then you click on agree once you agree. And next. I'm in Canada. I'm going to choose my time zone. Click on next. I'm going to choose a password. And I'm going to pause the video and enter my email address here. Actually, you can enter uh, any email address if you want. Let's see. Proxmox. Okay, 
I'm going to give it a host name. At a later point, I will install under, uh, another virtual machine, uh, which I'm going to call Proximal VM2. Uh, and I will actually do a video on how to perform live migration. But on this video, I'm just going to focus only on Proximus VM1. I'm not going to show you how to install a VM2 uh, uh, on this video. The next video, I will probably just install another Proximus server, pre have it pre-installed, and then I will show you how to enable the clustering and then and then perform uh, live migration. So in this case, uh, I'm going to change the fourth octet of the IP address to something else, like 101, so that I know it's server 1. Click on, I could be everything defaults, but you can change this if you want in this case. It, in this case, since I selected uh, bridge mode on the VM, uh, it basically uh, contacted the DHCP server and then got an IP address, but in this case I want to set a static IP address, I don't want the IP address to be changing uh, all the time. Okay, I'm going to click on next. Okay, so now it's going to go through the uh, installation process of the uh, Proxmox uh, uh, server. It's going to take a few moments. Okay, you can see some of the features that it provides. Live migration, uh, so you can move your running servers uh, from one physical host to another without any downtime. So that's pretty good, uh, and you're getting it free. Uh, as well as, uh, I'll show you the, how the web console looks like. Uh, it has a pretty nice uh, web-based console, uh, unlike VMware or you know uh, other hypervisors where you may need to install a, a, a client application. Although VMware recently, uh, VMware actually uh, have a web client, but uh, you may not be able to run all the features on the web client. But in this case, totally web client based. We are pretty close. Okay, ninety nine per cent. Okay, so we're done. Uh, so I'm just gonna click on reboot here. Just gonna reboot this uh, VM. That didn't take long time, which is good. So now we're in the grub menu here. I'm gonna press enter so that it goes quicker. Okay, so we have our server ready. So it's saying, Welcome to the Proxmox virtual environment. Please use your web browser to configure the server. Connect to uh, it, gave me a URL basically with my IP address. So make sure you're, if you're accessing this web uh, URL from a different uh, uh, computer, make sure that the uh, you know, firewalls allow that. But usually, in most cases, it does. So it shouldn't be an issue. So I'm just going to go to my uh, browser here and try to go there. I believe I'm correct. Let's try. Okay. 
since uh, it's in a test machine, I don't have a uh, trusted certificate at this point. I'm just gonna say I understand the risk and add exception. And here you go. I'm back. I'm I'm in I'm the login screen of the Proxmox web, web GUI here. So I'm gonna use root and the password that I chose during installation. Click on login, and I'm in. Here is my server. So now I can create VMs if I want, and I can basically upload ISO files uh, and then uh, install an OS. So um, let me see if I can. So you have different tabs here. Uh, uh, summary, you can see how the server is doing, what services are uh, running, uh, network configuration here. So you see my IP address here. So it created a basic bridge interface. Uh, the DNS information, you can modify this information here and uh, time information so you can uh, configure time time settings here. So you stuck for logging, history, and you can get some subscription with the support if you have any. And then it's the local data store here uh, and I'm gonna click on the content and I will upload an ISO file so that I can create some virtual machines on this Proxmos V here. So I'm going to click on select uh, the ISO and let me go to my download directory and I'm going to do CentOS 6.3 minimal installation and upload. So it's uploading uh, the CentOS uh, ISO. Okay, since in my home network is uh, basically sitting on this machine, so that's why it's so fast. Okay, so I have the ISO uploaded, so I'm just gonna create a new VM here. So click on this. Uh, actually, there's an icon here that you can use. Uh, create a VM and create a, I think, container. So Proxmos not only provide you the ability to create KVM. Uh, based VMs. Uh, you can also is, uh, create OpenVZ uh, VMs, uh, which is basically kind of container, virtual container that it creates on top of the existing OS. So I just like the KVM, which ha gives better performance. Uh, so I like, I'm going to create a VM here. So I'm going to give it a name as uh, CentOS uh, 1. Don't have a resource pool yet, so I'm not going to choose any. Click on next here, and I'm gonna say Linux. Mm, yeah, that should do it. And ISO image, I uploaded that and select that. You can even use your physical CD drive on the VM. Next, hard drive, I will keep it as I don't need uh, too much here, so I'm gonna say. 6 gigabyte. I will keep it SCSI, but you can change it if you want. Change, and you have the option to change uh, whatever disk you want. You can make it as VMware image format or RAW if you want. Uh, I I can keep it RAW in this case, but uh, if you're if you know that the, you have a Proxmos environment and you want to migrate some VMs to the VMware environment, you may want to choose VMDK and then that will give you better migration ability. Uh, and keep it as everything is default here. CPU, I'll keep it default. But I can change the CPU type if I want, but I will keep it as default. And memory 512 should be good enough. Uh, I like E1000, so. I'll choose E1000, but you could keep default if you want. Okay, I'll keep it as bridge device for now. Finish. So now it's gonna create the VM here. And I'm gonna start this VM.
okay so you see the stat is running here so now uh, I can see the information hardware uh, options and monitor backup I can back up a VM if I want so take a snapshot and a lot of settings are there just gonna click on right click here see if I can open the console if I have Java working unfortunately I don't have Java enabled let me see if I can enable it yes I can click on yes okay let's see okay so you're in the VM installation menu here so I can install the VM I'm not going to go through the uh, CentOS installation uh, but uh, you can definitely try it out and let me know if, you, if it helps you uh, and at a later time I will basically uh, create a video uh, where I will show how to uh, perform live migration and cluster configuration for now I'm just gonna end the video thanks for watching the video